End of game. Buckle up. It is showtime. What's up, everybody? We are live. The Red Show. Only on the redonline.com. Uh, listen to me. Jump in chat right now. It is packed. Everybody's excited. It's just, it's you know, it's a typical Red Night, uh, Red Show night with a little bit of a fucking, uh, a little bit of a flair, let's call it. You know what I mean? We always got a little bit of a, always something going on. And then always right in the middle of it, somehow to Red Show. We stick our fucking noses where it doesn't belong. That's what we do. Uh, as always, I'm your boy Footer. Um, with me, my, my pal, my co-host, my man, the lovely, the talented, the large-breasted, Peaches Rock. What up, Pete? It's perfectly said, Footer. Uh, our nose is where it almost never belongs. We're going to stick it right in there once again. Uh, Huffington Post. Uh, uh, Pete Rock, move, move your dog. Get your, get your nose away from there. Put him down. No, no, Stop not, that. Not, no, 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 no. What are you not doing? Me. No, no, no. Uh, of course, with us, uh, many of you have, have seen this, you've anticipated, we do indeed have with us, live via Skype from uh, across the pond, as the kids say, I think, is Mr. Uh, Milo Yiannopoulos. Uh, Milo, you're with us, right? I am. Thank you so much. So glad you hung in there with us. As I understand it, it's uh, it's it's one thirty. Is that about right? Oh, it is, but I don't really sleep, so don't worry. <laughs> and, I, and I had the, the joy of listening to that amazing musical introduction. I felt like I felt so alive. <laughs> uh, well, that, that's what we do. We like to kind of get everybody just. Yeah, all right, let's be honest. It's not. We have nothing to do with the uh, the the listeners. It's really just to kind of um, feed into our egos to make us sound big, feel <laughs> big. You know what I mean? It's all it's really I about. Felt like I was in Gladiator. Yes. I was like the star of some like amazing sword and sandals epic. I was about to take down the evil emperor. No, I mean like I, I you know what? I'm going to actually I'm going to when I play this back, I'm going to take the audio out. I'm going to start every day like this. I'm going to have it as my morning alarm. This is how I want this is the vibe I want behind my life. And I'll be honest I, with you. I if, told if we I told ended him. the entire show right here and now based on that, I'd, I'd be happy because that's what you, we yeah, want, Milo. We're trying to give <laughs> to the people. Yeah. P-Rock, you just nailed it. It's going to be like, all right, everybody, thanks so much, thanks, Milo. Guys. Thanks for stopping by. Week. Great time. Thanks, guys. Cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Headphone. Headphones off. <laughs> Uh, look, I, I like like Pirock said. We know it's late uh, over there for you, so we do we appreciate you hanging out. Um, we, sure. Look, they're, they're, I mean, look, you, you're the uh, you're the hot item right now. Come on, everybody, you're the you're the hot chick that everybody wants I, to bang right now. You're saying that it's very flattering. Ew. Very flattering. Well, now I'm annoyed that other people. Look, I just made it about me. I'm mad that other people say it. And I'm just like a hack. I just said the same thing everybody else says. <laughs> well, you know what? Sometimes if everyone's speaking the truth, all you can do is speak the truth along with them. <laughs> Boom. There you go. Okay, my, my ego's second to yours. I, I have the second. Ego. <laughs> Everybody's ego is second to mine. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, you know, I guess what really kind of caught our attention, I mean, we, we know who you are. You, you're essentially, in, in many ways, and among many other things, you're a, you're a nudge. You're a fucking Twitter nudge. You know what I mean by nudge? I don't. Well, it it means you're someone that just kind of likes to poke anyone in the ribs they can, stir a little shit. But you like a, glad, a, a gadfly or a provocateur. One hundred percent. Let me put the up. Where, where is nudge? Nudge. It's well, it's kind of like I think it's like more of like an old Italian grandma. Like <laughs> stop being such a <laughs> stop being such a nudge. Get out of here for the go. Like, I love that. I love that. It's like a rebel rouser. Yeah, 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 it's kind of a go me. I'm just being a nudge. <laughs> but, there you go. That, you know, we're going to allow, you, we're allow you to use that one. Doesn't do Thank cover you so much. That. What um, I, I think what really got our attention, or what personally got my attention on Twitter.com, it's a social media platform. You can download it on your phone. It's a whole thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, if you're interested, I mean, you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I happened to notice on Twitter that last week that they re- I, what I saw was they removed your bulge, and I'm glad I looked at it twice. Whoa, whoa, what do you mean he's bulge? What are you talking about? They did, they did. They demoted me to a member of the proletariat, Practic- <laughs> uh, practically poor. You know, I was, I, was, I was in the elites. I was in the gold ranks of you know, the mass ranks. And knocked over my crucifix. Jesus uh, Christ, I was in the mass <laughs> That's, that's a conversation for another day. Sure. Um, no, I, was in, I was in the massed ranks of the media and celebrity elites. You know, I was verified on Twitter. People knew I was somebody. And then because they don't like my jokes and they don't like my politics and they can't wrap their head around the fact that this gay guy might not be like, you know, a feminist and a Black Lives Matter supporter and the biggest like progressive douchebag on the planet. <laughs> and then actually I might not only be conservative, but bring some sass with it and bring the facts and destroy them in debates that I'm becoming a problem for them. You 
You know, I had like 72, 73 million tweet impressions in the last 28 days. Like, I'm really blowing up. People love me. They love my stuff. And, um, and this has become a problem for the left because they don't really know how to fight me. I've got this sort of social justice insulation because I'm a fag. They won't come after me. And I'm like, come on, please. I, I can take it. Trust me, I can take it. Um, anyway, so they... They, they took my badge away as a sort of slap on the wrist. The problem for Twitter is they're using um, a mechanism which is designed to verify the identity of public figures, and they're using it as an ideological weapon. And the whole press went nuts about it because they realize what's happening. They understand the consequence of this. They know what this is a sign, um, you know, that Twitter has taken a side in the culture wars. Well, because and they're supposed to be, Milo, they're supposed to be protecting you. you you're, you're the gay guy. You're the, you're the, um, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're that guy that they want to protect. You, you need that because to protect you. Of course. Don't you know that? <laughs> like, who's protecting my speech against these vile harassers? It's just the problem yeah, is that the vile harassers are feminists, and uh, they've picked the feminists over the gay guy. <laughs> really it's unbelievable do. how hypocritical they, they, they really are. Um, and that's the, the again, that's the, that's the, thing that really is just it makes them even even sillier is that don't they understand that you know it, uh, you have somebody like yourself that that has all these followers all these supporters you would think by this time they would go you know what it, this is legit i think you know he's not just someone that's going to go away this is going to be here for a little while they, they need to just jump on board it's time it's time <laughs> This is it, you know. Um, I've had like what is it, seventeen, eighteen thousand new followers just since the beginning of January. Probably twenty five thousand since Christmas, since they started screwing with me. Absolutely amazing. And the thing is, like, I'm not some schmuck, right? I'm not some like random, you know, internet troll. I am like a senior staff editor at a major media organization. You know, exactly they my might, point. they exactly. might not like that media organization, but they don't get to choose who is a, who is famous and who isn't, right? The public do. And the public has chosen. And, you know, the um, and the other thing is, like, just the extraordinary pettiness of not banning me or suspending me or doing anything, like, you know, that they can't point. And they refuse to tell me why they did it. They will not tell me why they did it. They refuse to point to anything I've said that might have been problematic. They won't tell me, you know, what's invading their safe spaces, you know, what I'm, what trigger warnings I'm, I'm, like, crashing through. They won't tell me about any of this stuff. They won't tell me what I've done wrong. I'm just the wrong kind of faggot. Well, and frankly... Like, it's, it's just extraordinary. So the press reaction has been amazing. Like, well, everybody you, was just a big fact, deal. Were you, in fact, um, confirmed to be the, the first uh, Twitter account to be unverified? I think I am. I th I'm definitely the first media figure of my, like, I don't know, like, I don't want to say stature, but, like, uh, of my... No, that's fine. Of... Yeah, no, that, that's fine. Um, you, that, you know, you know. I think, I think you, may, uh, you may be groundbreaking. You might be one groundbreaking motherfucker right now. Yes, uh, you, another way in which I'm making history. I'm so, I'm just, I'm, I'm so overburdened with, the, with the, <laughs> my, own, my own history making You're and groundbreakingness. And if anybody's just checking in, you are listening to The Red Show, and uh, we, we have Milo with us, at Nero, um, on Twitter. Um, listen, would you, uh, would you take some calls if, if we opened up the lines? If, if, again, I'd love to. I'd love to. Beautiful. I think it's uh, 630 Red Talk, if anybody wants to jump in, if they have any questions for uh, Mr. Milo. And look, um, we, we know you assholes, and Milo, we've been doing this for, for a little over five years, so we have, a, we have a decent following, but they're assholes, man. So we're, we're going we're gonna to hope for the oh, best. Oh, listen, I'm very happy to talk to anybody. I'll tell you something. Most journalists hate their own readers, which is why like all the comment sections are closing. CNN, the Daily Beast, they're all closing the comment sections. They're all calling their own readers harassers and abusers and threateners. All this is garbage, right? They just can't stand and criticism and ridicule. I have my phone number in my Twitter profile. Anyone can WhatsApp me any fucking time, and I will speak to them, and I'll have a chat with them, and sometimes they don't like me, sometimes they do like me. I'm probably the most accessible high-profile journalist in the world. I will talk we, to anybody. And that's how so we if, connect you're, if your listeners are assholes, that's great. I'm perfectly fine about it. If your listeners are nice, that's good, too. Well, I, 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 I genuinely don't mind. I have rhino hide, so bring it on. They're really just assholes in that oh. they, want to, they want to hear themselves do something funny on the radio, if you will. But no, oh, you have trolls? Like you, who phone up and do crazy shit? Bit, yeah, bit. yeah, but you know what? I, I have confidence tonight. I really do. I feel I feel good about them. I, you know what? I tend to pick out the best in people, so maybe it'll be fine. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, again, may, may, we'll see. We'll have uh, we'll have some maybe a couple of screens. Go. We'll do a little screening call. We won't keep you too long. And if we don't get anything, oh, uh, no, it's fine. Listen, decent, I'm we'll, happy we'll to bounce. stay for as long as you want me. You kick me off when you get bored. Right on. And I do want to point out that, that all of us, uh, Footer and I, and our producers, Tex and, and Scrambler, we all think like you in, in a in a right side, you know, minded kind of way, in a conservative kind of way. I mean, we're 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 not like. 
I don't think any of us are super far right. And I don't think. You no way. Right. We're, we're right. Believe me, we're right in his uh, ballpark when it comes to fucking uh, politically. We're right. We're, do we have a call? Because the the, the, the sound just changed. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Let's go to the call. Quick. Uh, caller, you're live on the red with uh, with uh, Milo. What's up? What do you got? Hello. Yes. What's up? Hi. Hi. It's Sleepy. What's up, Sleepy Pop Tart? What's going on, girl? Uh, you're on with uh, with Milo. Do you have any questions? I I just have to say I adore you, Milo. I have loved oh, you from huh? the moment I saw you. Oh, um, thank you. I, I am a, I am a female. I uh, believe in gamer gate. Um, I think feminism. I've I will tell you this. I believe I, I I started learning about feminism when I was in first grade, and I have always thought it was just the grossest thing ever. And uh, and I I don't like what's you know, going on, and as a woman, I am attacked for saying such things, and yeah. I appreciate you for what you do, because you can speak out for women in a way that is just, it's beyond anything I could ever do. You, and, better, be say, you better be saying this as you're baking from your kitchen, by the way. <laughs> you, hear me, you hear me, toots? Yeah, yeah I'm feeling that. Seriously, though, thank you so much. It's actually kind of brave for women to talk out like this. I'll tell you why. Because women who speak out like this, like Lauren Southern, the libertarian politician in Canada, who's also a, a political commentator for Rebel Media, um, she gets so much, like, horrific abuse, like real abuse, not the kind of stuff the Twitter feminist crazies call abuse, but real shit, uh, from feminists who don't like her. For women to speak up against feminism, which has turned into what Christine Off Summers calls a kind of female chauvinism, it's turned into man-hating and Misandry. It's not really about quality anymore. It's about man hating. For women to stand up and say, "Do you know what? Like, actually, I'm not a feminist, and I do have a problem with feminism," is brave. Even though you know four fifths of American women agree with you. You know, the number of, of women who support feminism has gone from 28 percent to 18 percent in just the last couple of years. Because support for it is nose diving because those women see what we see, which is that feminism has become about hating men. And most women don't hate men. Most women were quite like a boyfriend. Most men were quite like a girlfriend. This oh, yeah. kind of Ugly sexism that drives that drives men and women apart doesn't serve anyone. So thank you so much for the kind things you said. Um, and let, just just know this: not only are you not alone, you're actually in the majority. Even if you don't hear your point of view very often in the media. So thank you so much. Beautiful. And Sleepy, before we before we let you go, do you want to say anything nice uh, about Piak and I? <laughs> I'm just saying you could. I mean, you, you could. I'm just saying. Uh, uh, you know, uh, very handsome gentlemen who are going to, you know, take back the world uh, as you should as men. And I love it. Absolutely. Right. You know? Say no more. Beautiful. All right, Thanks, well, we're going to let you go because we are packed. Right, Piak? We got some more people on the line. Screams, we good? Uh, do we have a next caller? Thank you, Sleepy Pop Tart. Okay. Hey, Boom, what's up, Lady what's up? Chucker? Take care. Okay, LT, what you got for Milo? Oh, my, I was just wondering, Milo, what's your natural hair color? Hi, how are you? Um, <laughs> what's my natural hair color? That, uh, a lady never tells. Fortunately, I'm not a lady. I'm a massive slut, so I'll tell you. Um, I am naturally a brunette, like a very dark brown. And I sometimes mix it up with like a light white platinum, and sometimes I like the frosted tips. But yeah, I'm. Uh, we, we, uh, my, my, we believe you. Pull your pants back up, please. You're on camera. Yes, we under, we see it matches. We see the color. Jesus, I don't mind. Take your time. I'm good. So I don't mind. It's something I'm going to get to see. I'm afraid, and it's only for the brothers. I know. We um, say the but, word. We do but, have the um, privilege yeah. of having Milo on cam, so we do we do see his lovely flowing uh, golden slash uh, dark locks. He's, he's got a nice mix. Yeah, I don't know if the listeners can see this, but I, my, my interlocutors on the call can see my beautiful flowing hair. <laughs> there you go. Look, yeah, we have a little, little fashion and uh, a little beauty uh, little beauty talk with the Red Show and Milo. You didn't yes. think you were going to hear that on this show, did you guys? No, you didn't. <laughs> Thanks, Lady Trucker. We got another call, Scrams? Thanks so much. Uh, yeah, Allie's All right, trying to call in. All right, later, LT. Later, later, Chucky. Take care. Uh, keep, it between the, keep it between the ditches, lady. <laughs> she, she, you know, she's, uh, Milo, she's a regular caller. She's a typical she's big, f yeah, big fat trucker lady. And, and oh, she's just, awesome. you know, she, the, oh, she's horrific, bro. She's horrific. <laughs> <laughs> My God. God. But a sweetheart. But a sweetheart. <laughs> but, 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 oh, but she's just adorable. Believe me. Oh, uh, bless her heart. Uh, Bless her heart. All right, um, let's get let's get on the phone one more time. I think we have another caller. Uh, Scott, is, is we got on hold or what? Uh, we're good to go now. Okay, Ali, what's up? 
Hi. Hi. Oh, thank you for taking my call. Hi. Milo, Milo is still available? Yes, ma'am. I'm right here. Hi, how are you? Thank you for um, entertaining calls from the public tonight. I was very <laughs> interested to talk to you. I'm one of these non-anonymous people as well, so um, I don't have my actual phone number in my um, Twitter handle, but it is available if you look at my website online. So I understand um, the complexity of being that available to the public, and I appreciate your openness in making yourself available for criticism and for dialogue with people who may not agree with you. Thank you. Oh, that, that sounds like a pretty big setup that you're about to get hit with something that she doesn't agree with. What do you got, Allie? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm like, okay, um, so that I, was lovely. I, I, now, what I, do you got from me? <laughs> verifying, that, that Twitter unverifying Milo is really one of the worst public decisions that I think they've made in terms of what this, the goals of this platform were intended to provide its audience. Uh, Donald Trump has said some pretty controversial things in the weeks leading up to this um, talk tonight. No one would even think of unverifying Donald Trump. So these kind of stupid uh, risk flaps with people who present a persona that they don't agree with, it's not consistent across the board. And it, to me, it looks like Twitter bullying its own users. Um, oh, I really don't. Right. I think you're absolutely right. And you know what? Um, it, it flies in the face of all of the public pronouncements this company makes. I mean, I think we can go as far as to say that Twitter is outright lying to its users. You know, uh, Jack Dorsey in October said he wanted Twitter to be a platform for free expression. He told Nick Bilton of the New York Times for the book uh, Hatching Twitter that he wanted Twitter to be like a utility company. He wanted to, it to flow like water. Well, I don't remember the last time my water company phoned me up and said, we're going to turn down your water pressure because we don't like your opinions. Um, you know, Twitter is constantly said it's a platform for free speech, but they don't mean it, and they're lying to users. What they actually mean is it's a platform for you to say whatever you want if you have the right politics. If you are a feminist, you can tweet kill all white men with impunity, and you will never be censured, you'll never be suspended, you'll never be banned, nothing bad will happen to you. But if you are somebody who suggests that maybe this intersectional third-wave feminism isn't the best way for men and women to get along, maybe it's, you know, the pendulum of equality has swung a little bit too far the other way, if you bring a funny fact-based critique of any any of their sacred cows, you get banned, you get suspended, you get blocked, you get, in my case, unverified because they didn't be they didn't dare to ban me because they knew what would happen to them. Well, um, okay, you know, I, so be I bet you that got thrown um, around. I bet you they said to themselves, you know what? Let, let's let's um, you know, maybe we should we should suspend him. And, and I guarantee that went around. And, I, and and you know what? I mock my words, and I, and I don't want to give you the fucking jinx. If, if 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 they they have the balls, I bet you they push you too far and they fucking suspend you or something. They're gonna go too far in some way because and they, wood, it doesn't happen. I've got to find some wood to touch. Yeah, yeah, hey, boom. Yeah, but hey, you know yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think you're absolutely right, and it's nice that you have the openness too. I don't know what you do for a living, man, but um, oh, I but do it's a radio nice show. Oh, not me. I'm not you. Not you. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. Paula, what what do you do for a living, ma'am? I'm a professor. Oh, you're a professor. Wow. Um, well, listen, I think it's great that you have that uh, accessibility to it's all too often these days public figures kind of cost it themselves away. They want to return to the era of broadcast media where you can push out a message full of lies and bias and personal opinion and ridiculous provocation and they don't expect any pushback. Well, my view on this is like, you know, I I'm a professional provocateur, um, you know, and I go out there, I rile people up, I start conversations, I present them with facts that don't fit their narrative and I expect to get the same back. If you go out and you do that and you refuse to listen to the voices that are telling you that you have ridiculous points of view, you're not, uh, you're not a, a public intellectual, you're not an interlocutor, you are not somebody worthy of, um, of engagement or respect. You're just a troll and a sociopath and a bully. And so it's nice that you have that, that, that engagement that people can, people can get in touch with you as well. So thank you so much for sharing that. Thanks, oh, Alex. I appreciate that. Um, my, my, the only other question that I had for you tonight, I, I wanted to do my research. I really was not, I'm not a gamer. I knew nothing about, I don't game as uh -huh. a pastime. Um, um, this particular issue with, um, you know, the bullying of feminists allegedly within the industry itself isn't one that uh, really lights the fire under my fanny. But, uh -huh. I, I, you know, I am a, a researcher by training, and, and I was very interested, so I started reading some things, 
And I really was wanting to hear your take on the way Wikipedia talks about what happened with your time at the Colonel, because to me, it sounded like a big slam against you that you left a lot of people hanging for uh, payment for yeah, working. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand that. Um, so basically, you know, Wik- Wikipedia, uh, for any kind of contentious public figure, Wikipedia has uh, edit wars, you know? So I had a business, it went through a bit of a rough patch. Um, I paid a bunch of people who didn't get paid from the company personally, which I didn't have to do. I could have let it go uh, bankrupt, but I tried to do a good thing. Like, I tried to be a nice guy, tried to do the decent thing, and, like, paid them out of my own pocket. Um, and restart the business and sold it very successfully so that was great of course on wikipedia there are people who take elements of the story and take them out of context forget what actually happened afterwards and use that use that as a way to discredit you to try and suggest that you did something awful or bad you know so um you know, the wicked what you have to understand with wikipedia when you read an entry for wikipedia whether it's about a contentious topic like gamergate or a contentious person like me that article is the product of wars between different factions behind the scenes and you never know what the what the priorities and what the biases are of different people who have contributed to different paragraphs. So if you want to know something, the best thing is always to just go to the source and ask them. But thank you so much. All right, Ali, thank you so much. Great call. Appreciate it. I don't know where we get some bad feedback. Ali, thank you. There we go. We're better, I think, right? Okay, yeah, I don't know. I'm hoping it was Ali, to be honest with you, but uh, yeah, let's, either way. Yeah, let's put an end to the calls based on that alone, if nothing else, because um, <laughs> that's no good. Uh, but I I wanted to – we talked about a couple of things, and we skipped over the – I noticed a, a great uh, poll you put out last week or a couple of days ago regarding double, Donald Trump. But I do want to say, based on Milo <laughs> – I know what's Twitter, coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The election is over. Because uh, he has Donald Trump winning by quite a large margin over, in quotes, some cuck. Some cuck <laughs> being uh, Jeb Bush. So we thought, ah, it's over. I was talking about Jeb. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> I, I said, but Milo, here's the shame. I, I swear to God, I, nobody agrees with me. But I always say I feel bad for Jeb only because I think he would be, uh, put it this way, I think he's such a bad candidate. But I don't think he would be as as a bad of a president as he is a candidate. You understand what I'm saying? Which again, he'll never get there. I mean, maybe with, he with that logic, a but a little bit hopeless, like a what sort of a sleepwalk president. He wouldn't be. I mean, he's not going to be like a, a Lincoln or whatever. But um, yeah. you know, he's not going to be up there in the top ten presidents ever. Like that's not going to happen. Uh, he's, he's, maybe, not, he's not going to. He's not going to have an impression on history like his brother or his dad. But. Um, you know the problem. The problem is with him. He's just seen as so weak and so ineffectual and so lazy. And every time he tries to take uh, a shot at Trump, Trump just blows him out of the water. And then like all those little, really, these yeah, little really remarks. Really. These little remarks, like yeah, you're very low energy, and it just sticks. You know, the mud that Donald Trump throws doesn't always stick, but to Jeb, it sticks because people watching at home are like, yeah, you know what, you're right. And this kind of this whole cup thing, which I like to make a joke out of, you know, I always say Jeb like in the voice of Sofia Vergara, you know, <laughs> like you know, with, <laughs> with the upside down exclamation mark first, you know, like Jeb. <laughs> this thing just I mean I don't know why I do it it's funny but um, you know, this stuff is stuck you know like he's hes just he's just not quite right for president in an era when people want strength and confidence and uh, you know like a, they, they want a reassertion of the American dream and American values and strength you know they want somebody they can oh, yeah. believe in somebody to make America great again I love Trump and I, you know what I'm tired of apologizing for it I think he's great and I did my poll, and what is it, 10,000 people voted now? Something like that already. It'll be 10,000 at least by the time it closes. Um, I think it was seven or eight earlier. And you know what? I just, I was just being obviously needlessly provocative, and I said, who's, you know, who's, who can make America great again, Donald Trump or great. some cuck? It, it, it was perfect. It really was. It was the results. I mean, sure, selection exactly. wise, because it's my followers. But still, you know, the Internet has decided. I also enjoyed that when the Internet decided... Uh, you know, I had I started this hashtag over Christmas, which is one of the reasons Twitter hates me so much. Feminism is cancer, uh, and I and I did a poll like, would you rather your child had a feminism, or b cancer, and cancer <laughs> won by fifty five to forty five percent, like twenty two thousand votes, and people people would rather have their kids had cancer than feminism. Like, obviously, it's a joke, it's funny, but it just goes to show that ordinary people are like, you know. T- are prepared to upset the status quo and say and do and vote for outrageous things because they're so sick of of the boring establishment that Jeb Bush represents. And that's why there are Trump voters, and that's why I'm popular. And with that, you had a hashtag that trended number two worldwide, did you not? 
I trended number three worldwide, but I was trending. I was the top trending topic in the UK, the US, Canada, and Germany. Why? Because people love me. They love the fact that I'm irreverent and I'm mischievous and I'm provocative, and I don't mind saying the unsayable. I don't mind going there and like. And this word that all the conservative media have decided is racist because they're conservative media like are such babies. They're all desperate to prove they're not racist because they're they're like. It's like they're looking up to liberals for approval. You know? That's why you're a perfect ma- you're a perfect match with the Red Show, sir. It's just it's unbelievable. It's a per- We've been kicked off um, two two stations so far, and when we finally said <laughs> "fuck this," we need to. What did you do? What did you well, do? Uh, it, it was all about uh, our, our language and things. We said things. Okay, the first the first one was um, the Huffington Post and the Young Turks um, went after us because we were protecting. Um, uh, an EMT that was fired because of his Twitter posts. He yeah. was, he, we, yeah, we, we befriended him and, and we had him on the show and we were attacked because we were making jokes about the, the, the reporter that, that ratted him out about, about who he was. And, and, you know, and, and, and that's how it started. So we got fired from the first station. The second one we got fired was, uh, I believe it was, yeah, it was because of a Twitter post. We, we... When one of them is in me. And they ask me to. Uh, so I have, a, I have a very specific, I have a very specific use case where I, I find personally that word acceptable because I know how to. Listen, I, I don't, I don't I, look. I, I had a little pre here about that, and I'm not even homosexual, so I can, I can understand. What, I, I can really understand. What, what, no, <laughs> they call me like, they, you know, they call me names. They ask me to call them names. Sure. Sort of like, you know, in the bedroom, right. it's all fair game, right? Um, no, you know, hundred percent. It just so, it, wrap, it, it wraps up the excitement, you know. It just makes them angrier. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, so we, we ended up we ended up losing a sponsor, and 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 the fucking the saddest part about the sponsor we lost was a fucking sponsor that sells fucking dildos because it, you know, it was, it, we, 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 yeah, it was uh, Adam and Eve. Um, look, well, I'm just gonna give them a plug now. It was Adam and Eve dot com. It was like you know, like the, the, no the five, Adam and Eve. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Adam and, and Steve, and, am I right, Milo? What's that? Adam and Steve, am I right, bro? I don't want Steve. Oh, Jesus Christ. Christ. Don't buy from them. That's great. <laughs> Steve sits in the corner and just fucking jerks off while fucking... Jerks uh, off while Adam is off with... with... Da- Daquan. <laughs> yeah, he just takes take a big crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jermichael is fucking Adam while Steve sits in the corner and just touches himself. That's right. And, <laughs> <laughs> and we all point and call him Jeb. And yeah, no, he's just... And he's just, he's just the fucking... <laughs> <laughs> it makes it worse because he's a liberal cuck, and he just keeps saying, he keeps going, you better, use, you better say N-word, you better not say the word, and just keep fucking whacking his bag. <laughs> fucking liberal cucks. There's nothing fucking worse. <laughs> really isn't. And, and by the way, everybody, you are listening to the world-famous internet radio show, The Red Show, and we have Milo. Um, hey, Milo, we want you, if you can, um, if you can maybe give us a, uh, a drop for... Uh, for for the red show maybe like uh, you know this is uh, you know give, yeah actually yeah you know just like this is the uh, my Milo you listen to the red show something like that be like give me a good sure. feed sure okay what can you, you do for us okay I'll do it uh, what should I say okay. I'm Milo Yiannopoulos the internet's most fabulous supervillain and you're listening to the red show boom, boom. boom. can't boom. beat that yeah. yeah. Like yeah. No, we don't even let, let me explain something. the press and everybody else better wake up this man didn't even need a fucking take two. Boom! One fucking take. <laughs> you don't get this better is, than that. This is what you get for working with professionals, honey. <laughs> Unbelievable. Milo, tell us, please. You'll come back on in the near future and be our pals and do this again. I will. I will absolutely come on. Don't drop the N word when I'm on. I want you to be on best behavior when I'm on your show because people are going to use it against me if you start being like you start getting up all in that shit, right? 100%. I don't want to hear that stuff. So no racism, no sexism, no naughtiness. When I'm on best behavior and under those circumstances, I'll come on whenever you want. Fair enough. We appreciate that. That's a deal. That. <laughs> With any racism, that. it's going to be me, and it's going to be against white people because I keep turning them down for sex. All right. <laughs> Milo, thanks so much. We, we, we loved it. You were fire, of course. We, we knew you would be, and, and I think you knew you would be too because you, you, know, you love yourself. You do, and I love that. I do, and I'm not sorry about it. <laughs> and we're, we're pretty, we're pretty good too. So between the three of us, we really do fucking. Again, we're just made for each other. This is, uh, this is gonna be a good thing. You know, as a matter of fact, why, why just let's just, do it just, just, just take, take, just take us along on the ride with you. That's all we ask. Not a big deal. You guys you know? seem, you guys seem very fun. So I'm sure we're gonna see each other again. Fantastic. We're gonna do it nude next time. You in? 
Boom. Oh, definitely. definitely. Shirtless. Do you know, I'm actually lifting at the moment. Like, I'm working out. It's my week five of working out. Like, I'm actually, I'm actually starting to get guns now. So, like, you, in maybe, like, May, when I'm the shape I want, I will totally, I will debut my body on your show. <laughs> right on. Love it. All right, bro. Thank you so much, man. We'll, we'll, we'll so talk to you soon. All right, Take bro. care. All right, bye-bye. There he is, everybody. How good was that?